It has been over two and a half years since the last update to the Surface Book lineup happened, and finally after waiting this long, we now have a new version of Microsoft's top of the line laptop, or two in one, technically. Regardless of the category, Microsoft sent me a Surface Book 3 to borrow, so let's go through it in this complete walkthrough. Now, if you're not familiar, complete walkthrough in this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the hardware. Firstly, the Service Book 3 comes in two sizes. We have a 13.5 inch and a 15 inch model, which is what I have here. They both have the surface-esque aspect ratio that we've come to expect from them of three by two instead of the 16 by nine that's more popular on most laptops. Now, I don't have too much of a preference of either, honestly, but three by two does mean that you have a bit more height to work with. So that can be handy for some specific tasks like say browsing the web. The 13.5 inch has a resolution of 3000 by 2000, while the 15 inch has 3240 by 2160. And while Microsoft doesn't mention a brightness figure on them, I managed to get a reading of about 450 nits on the 15 inch with a white background at full brightness. So that means plenty of brightness for indoor use and you'll only struggle a bit if you're in direct sunlight. The laptop is made out of magnesium and the 13.5 inch weight is either 3.38 pounds for the i5 model or 3.62 pounds for the i7 model. And the 15 inch here only comes with an i7 option and that weighs 4.2 pounds. Now, of course we have the sort of claim to fame design wise on the Surface Book still intact. And that's the fact that it can detach its screen from the base via a software icon in the taskbar or this physical button on the keyboard to become a massive in a good way, I think, tablet. And real quick, for everyone mentioning the size of the bezels around the screen being larger than what we find on most laptops now, it's most likely because you really just need somewhere to hold when you're using it as a tablet. You can have Windows even automatically switch to tablet mode once you do detach it, which is something I honestly haven't used in a long time and find it is way more useful than I remember it being. The biggest difference in this form factor on the book versus say the Surface Pro lineup is that it more resembles a proper laptop with a solid base as well as no kickstand. Something to note though is that once you detach it, you lose the more powerful discrete GPU that is housed in the base that will help with photo editing, video editing, etc. And instead you'll use the internal Intel Iris Plus GPU. Now you can remedy this though by actually reattaching the screen backwards and using it at an angle or laying it flat against the keyboard to at least get the tablet feel while keeping the power as well as the extra battery that's housed in the base that we'll talk about more in a sec. Even if it just kind of makes for a, well, very thick tablet. In the back, we have the unmistakable Chrome minimalistic Windows logo and the entire thing falls quite in line with the entire Surface design language of which I'm honestly a fan of. And it's to the point where if you saw it next to its predecessor, the Surface Book 2, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Now, one concern some of you mentioned to me was the wobble of the screen that bothered some people on the older models. And I can say that it definitely feels secure to me while typing even on my lap. Above the screen, we have the same IR hardware and webcam from the Surface Book 2 that allows you to use Windows Hello to log into the device. There is one addition though, and that's that Microsoft has changed the mics to their newer studio mics as they call them. So here's what that 1080p webcam looks like and those studio mics sound like, which Personally, I think they sound pretty good and a lot louder than some of the other mics I've used on laptops. And uh, it might be a good thing for all of those weird webcam meetings that we're all doing a lot more of lately. Below the screen, we have our backlit keyboard that I've always loved typing on, even with the Surface Book 2. And it actually feels even better on the Surface Book 3, which is most likely thanks to the extra bit of key travel that we have now. Now, beneath that keyboard, we have another thing that I've always loved on the Surface Books, and that is just as good here, and that's the Glass Precision Trackpad. Now, I've always harped on how much better Precision Trackpads are, thanks to Windows handling the drivers for them compared to the old way of each OEM doing them themselves, but when Microsoft does the hardware and handles the software in this case for this, it's even better. Go figure. Near the top of the screen, we have our four Dolby Atmos speakers. Moving around the back of the device, we also have a rear facing eight megapixel camera to be used to take photos of meetings, classes, or documents using the built-in camera app for Windows. And then you can use the program of your choice to annotate on it with the Surface Pen. That pen, by the way, is not included with the laptop, but at least at the time of writing this, 
it's available for $79 instead of the usual $100. If you do opt for it, it'll magnetically attach to either side of the laptop screen, and it does so pretty solidly, thankfully. Now there's also support for the Surface Dial, which has always been intriguing to me as a device that you can put on or off the screen and use for various controls and apps that support it, but that also costs another $100. For ports, we have two USB Type-A ports on the left that have been upgraded from USB 3.1 Gen 1 to USB 3.1 Gen 2. So they double their theoretical speeds from five gigabits per second to 10. And along with that, we have something I've always appreciated on laptops when it can be found as it makes it simpler to offload footage to them, which is a full SD card reader. On the right, we have a USB Type-C port that has also been upgraded from 3.1 Gen 1 to Gen 2, but still sadly doesn't have Thunderbolt 3. Now, this is sad for most creators, as that is a connection type that is four times as fast as Gen 2 3.1 even is, and would have allowed to connect to external GPU housings, as well as just a plethora of other super popular external drives to transfer files a lot faster. But there you go. Now, I honestly make do without any Thunderbolt devices myself, so it's not a big deal to me, but is definitely something some of the other YouTubers I know would not be happy about. Next to that, we have the proprietary Surface Connect port that you connect the charger to to charge the laptop, as well as there are also proprietary Surface Dock accessories too. Now, there is another one of these under the screen when you remove it, by the way, so you could potentially leave the base behind and just bring the charger if you wanted to use this as like a tablet which is, I don't know, interesting. For connectivity, we have Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 6 now. And if you're curious, you can watch my decoder episode, the explainer series that I do here on the channel for what the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 even are here. As I hinted earlier, we have two batteries in this laptop. Based on running a quick battery report in command prompt, they seem to be a 22.3 watt hour battery in the display part and a 59.7 watt hour battery in the base, making for a combined 82 watt hour battery here in the 15 inch model. So, as is the usual here on the channel, let's do an albeit unscientific test and see how long it lasts playing a YouTube video at 1080p over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness on the default recommended power setting. And now, because I'm curious, how long does it take to kill just the screen by itself? So, Let's do the same kind of a test on there, and this way you'll at least have an idea of how long it'll last when detached and using it as a tablet. Something else of note here is the fact that the 15 inch model now comes with a more powerful 127 watt charger, which is good, considering the last model and its less powerful charger reportedly had some issues with keeping it charged during heavy gaming with the power settings on quote, best performance. That charging brick is also thankfully small and portable and has a little bonus of a seven watt USB-A port for charging another device with it if you want. Really quick though, let's see how long it takes to charge the laptop from zero to 100. Now, let's talk about what is most exciting about this Surface Book 3. What's on the inside? We have the option of a 10th gen Intel i5 1035G7 or i7 1065G7 in the 13.5 inch model, and only the option of the latter in the 15 inch model. These are paired with much faster than usual, 3,733 megahertz LPDDR4X RAM in up to 32 gigs of capacity. We also have the quote, fastest SSDs that Microsoft has ever shipped apparently in 256, 512, and one terabyte for both models, as well as two terabytes for the 15 inch model. For GPU, which is something I care about a lot for editing, we have either an Intel Iris Plus or an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Max-Q with four gigs of GDR5 memory in the 13.5 inch, and we have an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti GPU with six gigs of GDR6 memory in the 15 inch model. My hope was that all of that added up to being enough to allow me to edit my admittedly overkill 6K Blackmagic RAW footage. And well, long story short, I have to turn down the resolution on the playback to one quarter, which I do anyway always, as there's no downside to me to do so, and it just makes playback smoother. But I do have to also pre-render some things every now and then when things get a little too complicated. But it does surprisingly work with my 6K raw footage in a 4K 
timeline. Now, it definitely feels like I am pushing this laptop to its limits when I'm doing that. Um, so that does kind of make me a little nervous, but I will keep using it for a bit and keep editing stuff with it. And uh, I'll post to social as well if you guys wanna follow me there at the unlocker with the E missing and the word unlocker and, and see if those nerves are just maybe a little unwarranted. Regardless though, that tells me right there that it, it can easily handle my Sony 4K footage from my a7 III, which is probably a much better example of what a lot more people are using than say this crazy raw footage. And so that is great. Now, for those interested in gaming with the laptop, here are some of the more popular gaming benchmarks for you to use to compare it to other laptops you're interested in and let's kind of see where it sits. Honestly though, this is a pretty new mid-tier GPU from NVIDIA, so 1080p gaming on here should be pretty solid, frankly, um, and you just don't get things like ray tracing, etc., like you do with the RTX GPUs. Also, a buddy of mine did a video specifically on gaming on this thing, so I'll link to that and you guys can go check that out if you're interested. Speaking of GPUs though, there is a secret model of the Surface Book 3. It's not really secret actually, like Microsoft announced it alongside all the other ones, but when you go to the Microsoft website, you can't actually find it there. And that's because they wanna only sell it to businesses. There is a Microsoft Service Book 3 with a Quadro RTX 3000 GPU from NVIDIA, and it costs $3,500. As for the rest of us, the 13.5 inch starts at $1599, while the 15 inch starts at $2299. And the unit I tested in this video, which is the 32 gig, 512 gig, 15 inch model is 27. 99. Now I'll leave a link below to the best price that I could find on all of these as well as more info for anyone curious. There you guys, walkthrough on the Surface Book 3. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of the Surface Book 3, of this video, all that other stuff. Always appreciate it. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, there's a link below to be taken to my email newsletter. You can sign up for that there. It goes out once a week. It has everything I do here on YouTube, plus other tips and tricks and other fun things that are on my website that don't necessarily make it here to video. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.